This is what you're paying for. Get out of my way. It's all part of the menu. It's okay. No, we're gonna die today. Yes, we are. Yeah. Told him it was my birthday. Seemed funny about three hours ago. So I just watched the menu. I didn't actually. I watched it about a month ago. I'm very late to recording this, but uh, I was also very late to watching it. So I think it all balances out just uh, just right. Uh, the menu is a difficult movie to talk about in a review format, especially when my goal is to talk about it while also avoiding spoilers. So unfortunately, there's not a lot I can say about this movie, as most of my thoughts have to do with the plot and the twists and, well, spoilers, obviously. And I don't want to get into, I don't want to get into all that. Maybe I'll do a more in-depth review at some point, but just for the time being, this movie, The Menu, uh, came out in November, I think early November, November 6th, November 8th. It's got Anya Taylor-Joy, it's got Nicholas Holt, it's got Ralph Fiennes in it, it's got John Leguizamo. I saw this movie with a few friends. It was a mostly empty theater, because I think it was in the middle of the week when we watched it, like a, a Wednesday or Thursday night. All right, who's excited to see the menu? It was a mostly empty theater, so it was, of course, it was optimal movie theater experience to watch it. And I don't think I would have enjoyed this movie with a big crowd. There's a few movies that are meant to be seen as part of a big audience. This movie is definitely not one of them. When I went into it, I was expecting something to do with cannibals. I think everyone was. Couldn't have been further from a horror movie about cannibals. There were some tense moments. I would describe it as a thriller. Far before I would describe it as a horror film, though. It's about this... It's implied to be like a rich couple. There's some plot stuff about who they actually are later on, but I don't want to get into any of that. It's about this this rich couple going to this incredibly exclusive restaurant. This very pretentious place owned by a celebrity chef. And they think, oh, we're going to enjoy a bunch of really fancy food from one of the best chefs on the planet or whatever. But then they get there and it turns out the chef is basically completely insane and deranged and evil and there's a lot of cool themes in this movie i have been thinking about it basically since i watched it i watched it for a second time not too long ago after it came out on hbo max and i liked it even more the second time everything about this movie completely subverted my expectations for it once again i don't want to get too much into spoilers or the actual plot of the film so i'll speak about it instead on a more technical level it was shot very efficiently it was very clean it was crisp i would describe it as weird word to describe a movie but i can't think of many better terms for it it was put together incredibly well on a technical level it was very clean it was very slick, that's a good word for it. The pacing was very frenetic, but at the same time it played it completely straight, which gave the pacing and tone a very surreal vibe. With most other movies, I would describe that kind of contrast within itself to be a negative thing, but I think because not only was that the point with this movie, but it was done so, so well and handled so well that I, it just made me like the movie more. It's a very unique movie. It was definitely one of my favorites of 2022. I already own it on Blu-ray because I make fantastic financial decisions. I would give it a, what was the rating system I used last time? Um, was it stars? Was it, was it points? I don't remember. We're gonna go with stars this time, even if that's not what I used last time. I would give this movie a four and a half out of five stars. I really, really liked it, and I recommend it to every single person watching it. One of my favorites of 2022. Go watch it. Thank you. <laughs>